Hello and welcome to the second chapter review of Twig by me. So uh, last time we left off with the children leaving the barn behind and now Gordon, Lillian, uh, Sylvester and Jamie and Helen are back on their way to the uh, orphanage as we will learn, uh, Lambsbridge. So now I guess I know why uh, they are called lambs and um, there are some interesting uh, bits and pieces about Sylvester here. Uh, he describes what he sees so we learn m as much about him as we learn about uh, the scenery. For example, uh, he's terribly burned and more than half of his uh, arms are covered in uh, red burns from the enzyme acid that he got uh, on his skin uh, last chapter. So um, he bites his tongue and uh, endures it <laughs> to generate tears. So Sylvester does not cry, he generates tears. So he treats his body like a, a meat mac, <laughs> uh, like a machine and not like a living thing. Well, maybe it's the same. <laughs> so. Uh, the children also talk about uh, what happened when they are um, interrogated by Mr. Haley, their handler or their psy calls him his not quite father. And someone says, yeah, uh, Sylvester didn't fall, he took a fall. So it was uh, his intention to, to take a fall and get splashed with acid I guess. So the children are back on their way. They uh, cover their faces probably because Sylvester has uh, burns overall on his face. They don't want to attract the attention. On the way home they see a lot of, um, they describe the scenery, the, the streets and the uh, overgrown arches of uh, branches uh, that are typical for the city apparently and there are there are al almost no living horses on the street only stitched ones and uh, or how they call it voltaic horses there are also pack beasts and apparently stitched humans there's a stitched bodyguard who um stays in the uh, in the cart with uh, Sylvester when Mr. Haley leaves. So uh, what do we learn about the setting? So they are walking on King Street, which sounds like the main street of this city. Redham, I think it's called. And the academy is uh, Redham Academy. So I, I looked up what Redham means. Redham, uh, the only thing I found is that uh, Redham was a pirate in the early 1700s. I don't know if this uh, just is a British sounding name or if it has something to do with the plot later. Interesting is that the people still fear the strange creatures on the street. So this pack beast with this long single tipped claws, which sounds like a monster from a Resident Evil movie or a Scarab from Ape's Odyssey. <laughs> um, people leave it alone and don't come near it. So it's interesting that people are okay with zombified, zombified people and zombified horses, but not with every genetic mutation. Uh, when the children return, they uh, walk into Mrs. Thetford, apparently an, an older lady but it, uh, she looks young. So here we see the limits of the technology that this world uses. The skin and the body looks young, but the person isn't. So her, her, her hairs are gray and p people still die of old age, I imagine. When they arrive at the orphanage, they see uh, there's a guard or something uh, name dropped uh, uh, Ralph Stein, which walks around the orphanage at top of a wall. So, but we are, we are given no more detail 
why this is uh, interesting. Uh, in the orphanage, Mrs. Earls um, is described as uh, the yeah, manager of this place, but uh, at least Sylvester has no emotional connection to this woman. And we learn that she doesn't spare the rot, so she regularly hits these children. Ah, Mr. Haley has also no emotional concern for Sylvester. He just asks if Sai is stable and then continues to interrogate about uh, their mission. Lillian had uh, three assignments so far and is asked if she will do another, apparently for tuition on the academy. So uh, the carriage is stopped because someone poured water onto the voltaic horses. So apparently th these stitched life forms, they stop working when you when they get wet, which is an interesting drawback because uh, in this city it always rains. It is mentioned just in the beginning. And yeah, it, it seems very strange to me that water is a, a weak point because water is so abundant in our world. So when uh, the driver calls Mr. Hale um, out, Sylvester tries to uh, read the documents that Mr. Hale brought with him, but the stitched bodyguard stops him. So now we learn that these stitched bodyguards are very limited in their mental capacities. They are they show fear or rage when they are confronted with fire. <laughs> I, I just want to uh, I, I want to imagine that these uh, stitched uh, creatures also have weaknesses uh, against earth and air <laughs> just to make the package complete. They are already weak against water and fire. Uh, we will see in, in what way this uh, is true or not. Yeah, um, when Mr. Hale returns and uh, catches Gordon red-handed... It's Sylvester. He, uh, we have an interesting dialogue between him and between... Um, so, uh, between him and, him and Sylvester. Each of you my colleagues in the other departments have made weapons. They've made viruses and more with the understanding that, they, that, that there may be a need for these weapons. So now we learn that probably all four of these children are weapons. And they even have project names. Helen is named Galatea, Jamie Caterpillar, Gordon Project Griffin and Sylvester Wyvern. Uh, and except for Caterpillar, these are names from mythology, Greek mythology, medieval my mythology. Galatea was uh, the wife of the Cyclops in the Odyssey. A Griffin is a guard for treasure or divine power. And the Wyvern is a two-legged dragon, so we will see if this has any direct consequences for what these children can do. I just expect that Jamie will show the most development in this biological power segment of the story, because Caterpillar, <laughs> Caterpillar evolves to Butterfly, I think. <laughs> and the chapter ends on the sad or surprising note that Sylvester is allowed by Mr. Hale to look into the documents and he searches for an expiration date. Probably his own. So, what does that mean? This chapter changes a lot about uh, how 
these four characters, Lillian excluded because Lillian is uh, a human who studies at the Academy, but Helen, Jamie, Gordon and Sylvester probably all know that they were created with a goal in mind. And, as far as we can guess from the dialogue, they already suspected that they have an expiration date or maybe biological, cr biologically created uh, creatures always have an expiration date as a safety feature, as a kill switch if, if you want. So my questions for the next chapter would be what is Mr. Hale going to do with Sylvester, with his burns? Will he get treatment? Why is Lillian helping Mr. Hale? And how, how much of an elite is the Academy? How much influence has the Academy over this world? And we, we learn very little about Gordon and Helen, except uh, that Sai notices that Gordon and Helen talk in 1.1, which tells me that either he is kind of jealous or that these children normally don't talk very much. At least Helen doesn't talk much. We, we knew that much. So, would your life change if you knew you were a genetically bred super weapon or monster? It changes a lot, I think. I hope I can increase the frequency or the amount of text I, I cover in my next videos. I think I will try to read two chapters for the next time and report back. I hope you enjoyed today's review and I hope you I see you in the next video. Goodbye.